My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered into His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all our faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation and following in His footsteps so that being made by His grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in His resurrection and in His life. We are now going to bless these palms. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify and bless these branches. Bless these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, we reach the eternal Jerusalem through Him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And with work long for his cried out the king into the king of Israel into the king into the king O Sana in the Let him enter the King of Glory. Who is this King of Glory? He is the Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Hail to the King. Hail to the King. Hail In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, 
we had a small entrance procession with the Lord. It was the Lord walking, sorry, walking in the person of the priest. Jesus has made his entry into Jerusalem. And we are also invited to make this entry into the Jerusalem of our life. Our passion and our death every day to our sin. Right at the beginning of this pass. Let us clasp, cast a glance on our lives. Reflect on all that is not so good into our lives and ask for pardon and strength. With a contrite heart, let us all ask for God's mercy and say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God who as an example of humility for the human race to follow caused our savior to take flesh and submit to the cross graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and humility and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens. He wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to the smithers, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response will be, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Kindly repeat, my, my God, Lord, my God, God why, why have you, you forsaken, forsaken me? me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. 
He trusted in the Lord. Let him save him. Let him release him if this is his friend. Response My, my God, Lord, my God, God why, why have you forsaken, forsaken me? Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. Response My, my God, God, my God. God. Why, Why have, have you, you forsaken, forsaken me? me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. Response My, my God, God, my God, God. Why, Why have, have you forsaken, forsaken me? me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. Response My, my God, my God, why, why have, have you forsaken, forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father the word of the Lord thanks be to God. God acclamation Christ became obedient unto death even that on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where, Where you want, want us, us to, to make the preparation for you to, to eat the, the Passover? Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man. And say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. 
So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man not to have been born at all. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came 
and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping? Are you still sleeping and taking rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, My friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? And he will at once send me more than twelve legion of angels? Do you think so? And how then would be the scriptures fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Sorry, as though I was a bandit. Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard this blasphemy. 
What is your verdict? They answered, He, he deserves, deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you, you Messiah. Who is, is it that, that struck you? you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What, what is, is that, that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It, it is not lawful to put, put them into, into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what has been, had been spoken to the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they made against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized 
that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today, I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let, Let him, him be, be crucified. crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right, and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he, he wants, wants to, for, for he, he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. 
and about three o'clock Jesus cried with a loud voice Eli Eli lema sabachthani that is my God my God why have you forsaken me when some of the bystanders heard it they said this, this man is calling for Elijah at once one of them ran and got a sponge filled it with sour wine put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink but the others said wait, wait. Let, let us see, see whether Elijah will come to save him then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last let us all kneel down for a while Kindly rise. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place and they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance they had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, Command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone.
my dear friends, today we begin the Holy Week. Today is Palm Sunday of the Lord. And the Holy Week, as you know, my dear friends, is the most holy time of the church. And the liturgy of the word, as you have heard though a little painful, maybe a bit of discomfort in this hot season, to listen to a long narrative of the Lord's Passion and before that the two readings, it matters, brings boredom, a little of anxiety, a little tiredness, fatigue, and so forth. And yet, we have been so patient to listen to the liturgy of the word so devoutly. And the liturgy of the word, as I said, my dear friends, is making a beautiful landing to us and moving us smoothly, bringing us into this holy week. Such beautiful thoughts, such beautiful narration, and so many beautiful things to reflect upon as we enter, embark into this Holy Week. What I see, my dear friends, in all these three readings of the Liturgy of the Word is Jesus, the suffering servant of Yahweh, just preparing himself. He's preparing himself for his task which his heavenly father had given to him ages back which was planned, well written, well organized. Everything was in black and white. Everything was determined. And the heavenly father is gradually unfolding his plan of salvation to his beloved people by letting his son go, go into his passion. My dear friends, all these three readings bring before me one strong message. Maybe you also, I don't know, but this is what comes to me. That Jesus is a strong-willed man. He's going ahead. I will go and do what my father has told me. By all means, I will not do. I will not displease, I will not betray my God's designs, my Father's designs. His design is that I, His beloved Son, though very painful for Him, He wants me to suffer, I will go. I will go. I will not hesitate. I will not take my steps back. If I do that, I will spoil His plans, I will destroy His own, at the face of his planning as an organized father, I will do that. I will make a big mistake. I will go ahead. These three wings, my dear friends, tell me this aspect of Jesus' intention is very clear intention that he wants to go ahead. He has to go ahead. He wants to go ahead. He wills to go ahead. In the first reading, we have just heard says, the Lord has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I was not rebellious. I was not stubborn. I did not turn backwards. I just went. This is the will of my father. I go. I gave my back to my spitters. I did not offer resistance. I could have. I could have. Don't beat me. Why are you beating me? Why are you hitting me, an innocent man? I could have said that, but I did not. I know what my father is up to. I know that is exactly my father's will, that they should hit me. And I just keep quiet about that. And my cheeks, and my cheeks, to those who pulled out the beard. I showed my cheeks. They were pulling my beard. I didn't resist. 
I didn't resist. I knew this was part of the plan, that I have to suffer through the hands of these men, his own creatures. Then they hit my face, they hit my face. But I did not hide my face. I did not hide my face from hitting and spitting. They even spat. And this is how I am getting set for the salvation of the world. In the second reading, my dear friend, the same thing seemed to be clear. Because he was the faithful servant of God, Jesus, his own son, God gave him a name above all names. Because he humbled himself so much, God gave him a name above all names. And all the creatures will bow down at this holy name of Jesus. The holy name. The point is this. Because he humbled himself like a servant. God raised him to such heights, such heights, there's no other name above the name of Jesus. So powerful, so good, so holy. And then in the long narrative, then in the long narrative that we have just heard, my dear friends, of course, I appreciate your patience. The same thing crosses my mind. The servant of God is all ready. He's getting set. Getting set. He's getting set. He's tuning himself to the designs of God. He's tuning himself. He's getting ready. Poor man will be killed. He knows it. And he's getting ready for that. My dear friends, the next question that comes to my mind is this. Why all this? Why? Why all this? Why that will is so strong? Why should you say, I will go ahead because, it's my, because of my father? Or whatever reason it is, I will go ahead. What is the reason? I was just reflecting, my dear friends. And I find at least two reasons. One, I take an example from our human nature when we love somebody. When we love somebody, we will do anything for that person. I don't mind whether it is a day. I don't mind whether it is a night. I don't mind whether I have or not. I don't mind whether my health fails. I don't mind how my financial position is. I don't mind whether I can help somebody. But when it comes to the, my beloved one, to the one I love and honestly love, I will go out of my ways and cross all the limits in the world to make that person happy. This is the giving part of it. Let's talk about the doing part of it. And when I love that person, I will do whatever that person tells me, even if it is difficult. Why? Because my beloved has told me that, so I'm doing, I'm obeying. Because the one I love has told me this, so I obey blindly obey something like this my dear friends I see why this Jesus' will is so strengthened it is so fortified and why it is not unshaken why because my father's will is so that I should go ahead to suffer for the humanity and whatever my father wants I will do by all means, I will not displease him. I will not make him unhappy. Again, as I said, I will not distort his plans. I will go just according to his plans. I will exactly fit into the plan that he had made ages ago that I should do this. And I am his beloved son. How can I displease him? This is one reason why his will is steadfast. I have to go. I'm determined to go. I have to suffer. I have to do this. Though he says, in hum humanly speaking, he says, even in the even in the response that we have given today, 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Like a child he cries. Like a child he cries. My father, if it is your will, let this cup pass away from me. Please take it away. Humanly speaking, like a child, he talks. I don't want. Humanly speaking, like a child, he begs his father and says, not once, at least twice. At least twice he begs of his father, father, my father, if it is your will, please let this cup pass away from me. If it is your will. My dear friends, in spite of this resistance, why he still goes forward? Though his weakness brings him back. Though his, even for that matter, temptation at that moment may be, why are you doing this? Why are you suffering? Why should you do this? Why should you die like this? Some temptation here and there must have been there, humanly speaking. The Bible does not speak about all the temptations of Jesus. Perhaps even at this moment, a temptation might have knocked at his door and said, Jesus, what are you doing? Are you a fool? What are you doing? Why are you killing yourself? Let the world go to hell. Why do you bother about the people? What is so big about that? God's design for you. So what if you see, if you're a son of his? Just keep that aside. Just go away from the cross. These temptations, humanly speaking, my dear friends, could have come across on his way. I'm just saying, because not everything is recorded here. Not all temptations of Jesus are recorded here. It's possible. But still then, my dear friends, why is Jesus going again? I said one reason is because he loved his father. And because he loves his father, he listens and does whatever his father wants. The second thought I'm placing before you, and first for me as a meditation, also, why he went ahead, why his will was so strong, because he loved me. And when I say loved me, each one of you should say, because he loved me, me. He thought of me on the cross. He thought of me in Gethsemane. He thought of me while he felt flat in that, in that garden. He thought of me before I was born. And he thought of me to give me salvation. And that's why, as I said, when you love someone, you are prepared to do anything for that person. He thought of me with love when he was taken up on the cross. He took my name. Believe it or not, he took my name. I'm dying for Manuel. I'm dying for my beloved John. I'm dying for my beloved Mary. I'm dying for my beloved whoever. Place your name there. Be happy about that. My dear friends, with these few reflections, maybe one or two, let us enter into this beautiful time the Lord is offering us. What is our disposition then? As we enter in, into this Holy Week, my dear friends, you must remember, as I was reflecting with you yesterday, Jesus is not suffering again. Let us be sure about this. Jesus is not dying physically again and again, after, after and after, over and over again. Every season of length, he's not dying. So what are we doing here? What are we doing? What we are doing here is, we go back in time, about 2,000 years ago, and reflect on what has gone by. Those days, how Jesus suffered. Bring that all into our mind, recollect that. And we tell the Lord, Lord, you are not alone. You are not alone. We accompany him in his suffering. And at the same time, saying him that when you carry your cross, I'm also carrying mine, the various crosses of my life this holy week. As we do this, my dear friends, we also look into our own lives and give up all that is unbecoming, detestful in our lives. 
as we also be with be one and reconcile with our brothers and sisters especially in these times which are very challenging for us in fact the whole world and finally my dear friends in this holy week let us meet our lord let us not omit this chance let us not lose this chance let us meet our lord how first within ourselves in our neighbor and and through our surroundings through our situations we are going through because jesus was bruised himself for us so let us ask him to heal all our brokenness our pain our loneliness and help us in this crushing moments not only us but the entire world We shall now say the I believe and profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Let us all bow. Suffer under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for our needs. We place now before the Lord a few intentions as we also pray for the needs of the entire world. Let your response be, Lord, bestow your kindness upon us. Kindly repeat, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your, your kindness, kindness upon, upon us. us. For the Holy Catholic Church, which is the living sign of the active presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the world, that the Church led by the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious may bear witness to Jesus, its Lord and Master. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your, kindness your kindness upon, upon us. us. For Christians who are persecuted on account of their faith in the Lord Jesus, that in their suffering they may withdraw they may draw strength from Jesus who has suffered and risen. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your, your kindness, kindness upon, upon us. us. That the church, which is the mystical body of Christ, may stand against all forms of discrimination 
and injustice prevalent in human society. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your us. kindness upon us. us. For all the weaker sections of society, such as the poor, the homeless, the sick, and the defenseless, that they may be cared for by God, who is kind to all. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your, kindness your kindness upon us. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that the celebration of Palm Sunday may help us in our resolve to face trials and difficulties and to have deep trust in God. We pray, Lord, Lord bestow, bestow your, your kindness, kindness upon us. Loving Father, because you are kind and loving, we feel free to place before you so much. And there's so much more to pray for, which you know, which you know better than us. Because you know our thoughts, you know our hearts, you know our minds. And, and before we can place that before you, you already know it. Father dear, grant all our heart's desires and may our lives be pleasing in your eyes. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Lord, I give them willingly. I give my free to go your way, and every step I shall take care for Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my help. My help for the power of His Spirit is in my heart And the joy of the Lord is my strength I give my eye to see the world And everyone in just the way you do I give my time to speak your word, to spread your name and freedom giving through. I pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of yours and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet, by this holy sacrifice, made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy and compassion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away all our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with the choirs of angels and archangels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, save us Savior, Savior of the, of the world. world, for by, by your, your cross and resurrection, resurrection you have set us, us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that parting of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints, especially our Saint Joseph Vaz, 
who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. say the our father we pray that the heavenly fathers will be done in us among us at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching let us pray that the heavenly fathers will may always prevail among us like his son did together our father, father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you set your apostles, and you say to each one of us, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace, and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I worthy, worthy that it should enter into my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let it be 
You know how I long to have you within me in the sacramental form. I would love to do so. But given the circumstances, I am not able to. I am not able to receive you sacramentally. And that's why, Lord, I ask you, plead you to do me this favor. At this moment, come into my being spiritually. Come into my being spiritually, take full possession of my whole being. You be my God, you be my Lord. And that's why in a small little hymn, I invite you into my life. I want you to come, Lord, into my heart. Come, Jesus. Come into my heart at this very sacred moment. Join me, Lord. Unite with me spiritually. And be my God. Be my Lord. Let us sing into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord. Come into my heart. Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come in. Jesus. 
let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your beloved Son, you have brought us to hope for what is what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Kindly bow your heads and receive the blessings promised in this prayer of the church, in this prayer of the people. Look with pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Thank you.